Today we're reviewing the cheapest 27 inch 1440p 240Hz refresh rate OLED gaming monitor on the market. RGB in the back Asymmetrical design Skinny bezels on a no lid Can't say that I mind Keep your enemies close But you eSports bros Keep your keyboards close up this is the ALC Agon Pro AG276 QZT. We're kind of in this awkward teenage phase between 1080p and 4K right now. Manufacturers know this, hence the endless stream of 1440p monitors. While I said cheapest, this monitor with a price tag of 3,699 ringgit, 69 nights, is still pretty up there for a 1440p monitor. For context, the average 1440p 240Hz IPS gaming monitor on the market costs between 2,000 to 3,500 ringgit. Of course, you can save a few bucks by going for a lower refresh rate or opting for or VA, but who goes for VA these days anyways? However, when compared to other monitors that's using the same exact display panel as this one, like the other A brand, you'll find that it's actually 500 to 1000 ringgit cheaper. At first glance, this monitor has a pretty subtle gamer aesthetic with a textured black plastic casing that sports an asymmetrical geometric RGB light channel on a gunmetal stand clad in plastic that also has an asymmetrical base. Look, even the button is a little off. Macam tak je? This stand allows you to tilt, swivel, height adjust, and pivot into portrait mode. It's actually surprisingly stable and doesn't wobble much. If you want more adjustability, you can always mount it to a VESA compatible monitor arm. Honestly, it's not the most epic looking, but I really like this small base that saves a lot of desk space for my audio and editing gear. It's also a plus for you FPS weirdos who like to have your keyboard right up to the screen. Also, I never use these tiny headphone holders because they are hard to reach, but it's there if you want it. The cable management is just aight. It's just a little too small. That's what she said. <sighs> In terms of I.O. ports, we get two HDMI 2.0 ports and two DisplayPort 1.4. So if you want to go 240Hz, you're going to have to use the Display Ports. You also get a 3.5mm headphone jack and a two-port USB hub. No USB-C means no laptop charging or KVM switch functionality. It'd be nice to have all these at this price point, but as long as the performance is good, I'm okay. Specs wise, as mentioned, this is a 26.5 inch 1440p W OLED panel with a 240Hz refresh rate and an advertised 0.03 millisecond grey to grey response time, which performs closer to 0.3 millisecond. But nonetheless, it is still superior compared to any LCD panel with the same refresh rate. To my eyes, it plays, looks and feel more like a uh, 360Hz IPS gaming monitor. It also has this anti-glare coating which makes it way easier to shoot with, but it's really up to you if you like a glossy or matte screen. So. One other major advantage of OLED is that it can maintain the same speed across all refresh rates, which makes it ever so slightly better than 240Hz LCD monitors when paired with a console like an Xbox or PS5 that only supports 120Hz. Next, let's talk about color. The AG276QZD is a white gamut monitor with that Macham Yes 10-bit color depth that is actually just 8-bit plus FRC. Though for SDR content, it's still very color accurate with a 95.3% DCI-P3 color gamut coverage that is very close to the advertised numbers. If you're working with sRGB, I would switch on the sRGB mode to put a clamp on the color gamut because white gamut monitors like this one tend to oversaturate colors. Out of the box, it's actually factory calibrated pretty well except for a color temperature that is a tad too warm. Calibrating it with our X-Rite i1 Display Pro could only do so much because the monitor doesn't allow too many color adjustments. Uh, also, its SDR brightness peaks out at 257 nits, which is pretty okay considering that most of us probably have our monitors calibrated to 100 uh, to 150 nits to keep our eyes from going blind. My eyes! 
Peace! For HDR content, this monitor has a REC 2020 coverage of 72.3% uh, to be expected of a W OLED monitor. And even though it doesn't go as bright as an IPS monitor with full array local dimming, this OLED monitor with a peak HDR brightness of 720 nits as long as you can keep ambient lighting down is still going to win in terms of HDR content mainly because number one, you get true zero level blacks and richer shadows for much better image contrast. Number two, you get a cleaner HDR image with no blooming or haloing, especially when you get a bright object in a dark area like neon lights or starry skies. And finally, number three, lower input lag in HDR gaming because OLEDs don't need to run a backlight zone algorithm. All of that means that you're gonna get an immersive gaming experience with a color accurate and punchy image that is silky smooth uh, even for competitive titles. Now, there are two minor drawbacks with an OLED gaming monitor like this compared to LCD. The first one is text clarity because the RWBG sub-pixel layout in this W OLED monitor will be a little blurry compared to conventional LCDs with an RGB layout. The second one would be burn in, especially when using it with a desktop for productivity purposes that will have a lot of static elements like toolbars in applications. AOC does provide a three-year warranty that covers burn in, but only if you perform maintenance in accordance with their instructions. What else? Oh yeah, speakers. It has them. To recap, here are the pros, myths, and cons of the AOC Aegon Pro AG276QZD. I'm giving this monitor a hashtag cheap buy, very the good for SDR and HDR gaming, 8.5 out of 10. In a plastic shell, this monitor really changed my mind. At first, I was like, 3,699 ringgit for a 1440p monitor? Neat or not, oh. But after gaming on it for a couple of weeks, now I must say that I'm quite sold. With any newer spec monitors, you can always expect to pay a little price premium because how few brands are actually using the panel. Being the cheapest one with this panel, I must say that it's actually pretty good value, especially for whomever that's running a mid-range uh, graphics card like an RTX 4070 Super up to a higher end 4080 Super as especially for HDR gaming. It can also pull double duty as a monitor for your console too, which is good. I would however not recommend it to anyone who's planning to get it as a primary monitor, uh, especially for productivity purposes due to common OLED issues like burn-in. Personally, I would use it as a secondary monitor, uh, mainly for gaming and watching movies, or pair it to a gaming only PC or my console. And that is everything I have to say about this AOC Aegon Pro AG276QZD. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like and share and also leave a comment down below if you have any questions regarding this monitor. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell harder than Pakyao hit Mayweather. Ding, ding. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram for more shenanigans from the Mom House crew. Again, my name is Bang Sawan Shane and I will see you in the next one.